Okay, coming up next on News 10 tonight, the votes are counted and the students have spoken. A very happy day for some and a sad day for others. We'll have the results of the Student Association elections with exclusive candidate reactions. Plus, Carrie Shevers has your perfect 10 forecast and Matt Fesserell has the latest in the world of sports. News 10 tonight is next. Stay tuned. How would you like to save $1,000 on your yearly living expenses? You heard right, $1,000. Then stop what you're doing and call Tom Tesserario today to see for yourself the quality off-campus housing he has to offer. All of Tom Tesserario's rental properties are clean and well-maintained, so students can rent with confidence. One, two, three, or four-bedroom apartments are available with trash removal, lawn care, full maintenance, water, and some with all utilities included. So hurry and call Tom Tom Tesserario at 343-2790 today. Located in the heart of downtown Oswego, Wayne Drug cares about the college student. If you're under the weather, our full-service pharmacy can get you the medicine you need to feel better fast. For added convenience, set up a charge account to have your prescription bill sent home to your parents. Our wide variety of other items makes Wayne Drug your one-stop college shop. Everything from snacks and school supplies to toothpaste and cards. Wayne Drog at the corner of West First and Bridge Streets in Oswego. Stop in today and you can be our next satisfied customer. Live from WTOP TV 10, SUNY Oswego. All the news, weather, and sports you need. This is News 10 tonight. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Peter Naughton. And I'm Joelle Mishka. Well, after two days of voting, it's official. The students of SUNY Oswego have chosen their student association president and vice president for the 2001-2002 school year. The results were announced at this evening's SA Senate meeting. And without further ado, let's take a look. The highly contested race for president went to off-campus Senator Tim Barnhart, who garnered just over 600 votes. Just 72 votes behind was Vice President Joe Storch. Candidates Beth Francis and John Cranford rounded out the pack. Over on the vice presidential side of the race, Onondaga Hall's Chris Hockey will be running Senate meetings starting next month, thanks to his lead of nearly 270 votes over Scott Lukowski from Scales Hall. And last but not least, a very important part of the election was the referendum where students were asked if they wanted to keep the SA fee mandatory for the next four years. This passed with a landslide with nearly 1,000 votes for and just under 200 votes against. And this election is the first since 1998 where there was an actual race for president. The past two SA presidents ran unopposed. Elections Committee Chair Ben Jakes Johnson says this election had the highest amount of voter turnout among those in recent memory. And continuing our team coverage of the Student Association election tonight, we spoke to the candidates to get their reactions to the election returns, and WTOP's Brian Hanna has more. Now, as you can see behind me, the polls have been closed since 6 p.m. It's been a busy day for the candidates, the election committee, and the SA Senate. Now, it was a day strung with high emotions, culminating with the announcement of the results of today's election. Hugs, tears, and shouts of joy were prevalent tonight as the results of the Student Association elections were announced. President-elect Tim Barnhart was ecstatic outside the Senate chambers as he thanked his supporters. Uh, your thoughts on the election? Well, I'm ecstatic that first the essay referendum passed. We uh, a ton more yeses than noes. Sorry, I can't really talk very well right now. <laughs> a little excited. Um, but thank you to everyone who voted yes for the referendum. Second of all, thank you for everybody who came out to vote. And lastly, thank you for everybody who came out to vote for me. I appreciate it. I look forward to serving a great year next year with the students of Oswego as your new student association president. Thank you. Any ideas for uh, next year yet? Well, <laughs> just like my platform said, increase student involvement and uh, bring better, bigger and better things to this campus. Now, Vice President-elect Chris Hockey had a different look on the election. He says he had a good time and that it was fun. Oh, thank you. Uh, it was uh, it was fun. It was uh, it was very close. Uh, Scott Lukowski was a uh, formidable opponent, and uh, I'm going to really appreciate working with him next year, uh, just as much as I did this year. So it was it was a good time, and I want to thank all my supporters, all the people that uh, have helped out throughout the campaign. Thank you. The other two candidates, John Cranford and Beth Francis, were both content with their campaigns and also commented on the Oswegonian endorsements. Yeah, uh, we had a really good turnout for everyone. Uh, I may not have won, but I had my presence out there, and some of my ideas I think will still get accomplished, and I'm very happy Tim won. Um, any feelings about the Oswegonian? Last week they endorsed Tim Barnhart. Uh, do you think that would have had any effect on the election, or do you think people just didn't pay attention to it? Or? 
I think it's a hit or miss situation. Uh, a lot of people did see the article and a lot of people came up to me and said, why are they doing this? And they did it and he won. I'm very happy for him, so that's all that matters. All right, thanks a lot. And Steph, Hi. your thoughts on the election? Um, you know what? Best man won, and I, I'm happy for Tim. I'm so glad. Okay. You know, that's all you can really say. At least I got out there and I tried, and I encourage everybody else to try too. But. The overall good feeling of the night, however, rested with the passage of the Student Association referendum. Ben Jakes Johnson comments on this. It was close. Uh, we had a record number of students voting. But of course, the most important thing is, is that the referendum passed. We will have our 70 clubs and organizations back next year. Now, we were not able to get any comment from Vice President Joe Storch or Vice Presidential Candidate Scott Lukowski, but it was a busy day strung with high emotions. President-elect Barnhart and Vice Presidential-elect Hockey will take over their positions on April 1st. The rest of the Senators will assume their positions on May 1st. But in conclusion, after a busy day, we do have Timothy Barnhart as our SA President, Scott Hockey as our Vice President, and the SA referendum was passed. For WTOP News, I'm Brian Hanna. Back to you. And a correction to that, that was Chris Hockey, not Scott Hockey. Thanks for that report, Brian. Happening around New York tonight, President Bush is nominating Syracuse Mayor Roy Bernardi for Assistant Secretary of the Department of Housing and Urban Development. If confirmed by the Senate, this Republican mayor will become Assistant HUD Secretary for Community Planning and Development. Bernardi must first get through a lengthy background check and confirmation process are expected to take several months. Bernardi was set to step down from the Syracuse mayor's post at the end of the year. He would be replaced by Common Council President Matt Driscoll. Driscoll has previously indicated his interest in a mayoral candidacy, candidacy but has not yet made any official announcement about the November race. One of Long Island's two counties will not be running for re-election this fall. Nassau County Executive Thomas Gulotta, who presided over the near bankruptcy of the county, has held the job since 1987. Fellow Republicans had said they wouldn't support Gulotta for another four-year term. County Republican leader Joseph Mondello has talked with former U.S. Senate candidate Rick Lazio about moving from Suffolk County to run for county executive. Lazio has said he hasn't decided whether to accept. Gulotta insisted his decision was based on a desire to spend more time with his family. The county also found itself in dire financial straits because of an antiquated tax assessment system. And New York City Mayor Rudy Giuliani today canceled a trip to California that was to be paid for by his book publisher, the Walt Disney Company. The company also has substantial business interest in the city. Giuliani says he won't be breaking any city ethics rules by making the trip, but adds the trip is not worth the problems. Giuliani was to deliver a speech before this evening in Santa Barbara before media industry executives at a Talk Magazine conference. Giuliani signed a book deal with Disney subsi subsidiary Talk Miramax last month. The mayor has received $3 million for writing two books. Disney has received millions of dollars in tax abatements from the city in recent years. And in Niagara Falls, a Canadian doctor who claimed part of a syringe got stuck in his mouth when he bit into a Big Mac is suing the restaurant's franchise owner and the entire company. The $4.5 million suit was filed in state Supreme Court. The doctor said the incident occurred when he stopped at the Niagara Falls McDonald's in 1999. When he bit into his hamburger, the tip of the syringe needle measuring about a quarter inch became lodged in his mouth. A call to McDonald's for comment was not immediately returned. And now we're here with Carrie Cheevers and a first look at the weather. It's going to be looking good uh, starting tomorrow afternoon into Thursday, the first half of the day on Thursday. But I'll tell you more about that in just a minute. And I'll take a look at your quick planner. Overnight tonight, we're going to get down to a low temperature of 31 degrees with some lake effect snow showers developing late. Uh, and we'll top out the day at a high temperature of 37 degrees with mostly cloudy skies and some snow showers tapering off in the afternoon. Coming up next in weather, I'll give you the complete details to your forecast. And I'll let you know what the weather will be like on your ride home Friday for spring break. That's all coming up next. So stay tuned to News 10 tonight. We'll be right back. We're watching News 10 tonight, Tuesday, with Peter Naughton, Joelle Mishka, Sean Ganley's Senate Reports, Matt Passarell Sports, and Carrie Cheevers with a Perfect 10 forecast.